Hey everybody, welcome on back. And just as a quick update, we have added a couple new vocab terms. I put value, uh, number, operators, uh, modulo, and special numbers. So with that, let's go ahead and keep going. And we're going to talk about strings. The next basic data type is the string. Strings are used to represent text. They are written by enclosing their contents in quotes. Uh, let me get this part. We'll say strings are used to represent text. They are written by enclosing their content in quotes. And we'll put a little note right here. It's going to be a single quote, double quotes, uh, or a backtick. Now, they're going to tell us that in a second, but why not? So down on the C, and let's just go ahead and copy all of these and put them over into the code section. And of course, all we're doing here is just having a look at them. So those are the three ways to write strings. You can use single quotes, double quotes, or back ticks to mark strings as long as the quotes at the start and the end of the string match. And so all they're saying there is that we cannot say something uh, like that. That's not really going to help us. In fact, it's going to consider this quote to be part of uh, the actual string. Now, what we're about to talk about with escaping quotes actually gets completely removed by using back ticks, but nevertheless, it's a good idea to talk about it. So almost anything can be put between quotes, and JavaScript will make a string value out of it. But a few characters are more difficult. You can imagine how putting quotes between quotes might be hard. Again, if we don't have back ticks, uh, or if we're trying to put a double quote inside of a double quote string, a couple of those things. Uh, new lines, the characters you get when you press enter, can be included without escaping only when the string is quoted with back ticks. Um, okay. To make it possible to include such characters in a string, the following notation is used. Whenever a backslash is found inside quoted text, it indicates that the character after it has a special meaning. This is called escaping the character. Sounds like a reasonable addition to our vocab terms. Escaping a character is uh, inside of a string, a character preceded by a backslash, and we'll include a backslash, is given special significance, significance, that does not look right, but that's okay. Uh, similarly, a T after a backslash means a tab character, take the following string, this is the first line, and this is the second. The actual text contained is this, this is the first line, and this is the second. Um, so let's go ahead and have a look at this real quick. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to paste it in there and then run it, see what happens. Excellent. So it demonstrates the principle without our needing to log it to the console, and that's nice. There are, of course, situations where you want a backslash in a string to be just a backslash, not a special code. If two backslashes follow each other, they will collapse together, and only one will be left in the resulting string value. This is how the string a new line character is written like da da da, -da can be expressed. Now, one of the things they're actually ignoring in this is uh, using single quotes if you want double quotes inside of your string, or using back ticks. Um, but that's not really super important to know the only way to do things. In fact, a lot of times at the beginning it can be very helpful to know just kind of what's part of the language. So a new line character is written like, and this backslash is going to escape this quote. This backslash is going to escape this backslash. Uh, this backslash is going to escape these quotes. So what we should get when we run it is the new line character is written like, and then, well, let's put that over like that so it's not all, oh, nuts, it doesn't even it out. Well, that's okay. So we'll leave it like that. And cool. Uh, strings, too, have to be modeled as a series of bits to be able to exist inside of the computer. The way JavaScript does this is based on the Unicode standard. This standard assigns a number to virtually every character you would ever need, including characters from Greek, Arabic, Japanese, Armenian, and so on. If we have a number for every character, a string can be described as a sequence of numbers. Uh, okay. So we're going to highlight all of this. That sounds like a reasonable addition to our vocab. So we'll say Unicode standard uh, signs a number. Again, I'm going to even out this so it's all on the same line. 
that assigns a number to virtually every character, yada, yada, yada. Excellent. And that's what JavaScript does. But there's a complication. JavaScript's representation uses 16 bits per string element, which can describe up to 2 to the 16th different characters. But Unicode defines more characters than that, about twice as many at this point. So some characters, such as many emoji, take up to uh, take up two character positions in JavaScript strings. We'll come back to this in chapter five. Okay. Uh, strings cannot be divided, multiplied, or subtracted, but the plus operator can be used on them. It does not add, but it concatenates. It glues two strings together. So concatenates is going to make it onto our vocab list. Conca Let's just go ahead and copy and paste. And So concatenate, we'll say concatenate, and concatenate will be glue. I appreciate they're using the term glue because you know you don't really use glue. But anyway, uh, the following line will produce the string concatenate: c o n plus c a t plus e plus nate. Let's go ahead and pop this into our code section. And we're going to hit run, and hopefully we'll see concatenate. Excellent. String values have a number of associated functions, methods, that can be used to perform other operations on them. I'll say more about these in chapter 4. Strings written with single or double quotes behave very much the same. The only difference is in which type of quote you need to escape inside of them. Backtick quoted strings, usually called template literals, can do a few more tricks. Apart from being able to span lines, they can also embed other values. Now, this is why backticks are actually super, super fun, because it gives us the ability to uh, eventually get around something that requires a little bit more skill <clears throat> uh, if we were to use it. Now, this is going to be a leap, but we're going to create a variable called name, and we're going to set name equal to David. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the value of name here. And if we run this, we can go ahead and get that. Now it might seem kind of you know, superfluous, and it is, at least for this example, but we can use what we're about to demonstrate to interpolate the value into the string without having to you know, use the plus operator. And it's essentially this guy right here. So we use this, and so this uh, dollar sign, open curly brace and close curly brace allows whatever is in here to be evaluated and then interpolated into the string. So if we run this, this is going to get calculated and it'll tell us that half of 100 is 50. So eventually that'll be relatively important. Uh, it was added to JavaScript, I think in ECMAScript 2015. But again, you're not really probably going to be asked about what version of JavaScript something was added in. You'll mostly be used to asked to use you know modern versions and to be able to get the job that you're trying to accomplish done. When you write something inside of this guy, in a template literal, its result will be computed, converted to a string, and included at that position. The example produces half of 100 is 50, as we just decided. Or not decided so much as noticed. But anyway, that's it for this mini section. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.